this is Kyle Harrison, and today we're going to look at how to implement view components in an AngularJS application. So to understand why we're doing this, we need to understand a little bit of what is AngularJS and what is Vue. Um, so first of all, AngularJS is a front-end framework for building web applications. This can be compared to Angular, to React, to Vue. Um, it's a little bit different from Angular, which is something that a lot of people get confused on. AngularJS is built using JavaScript, as you can imagine with, uh, by the name AngularJS, whereas Angular is built using TypeScript, and it's just a more modern version of this. Um, so the problem with AngularJS right now is that it will be, um, is that it's not going to be supported for very long. It has about another year left before it's not going to get any more updates. So that means that security could be compromised. There could be live vulnerabilities that are reported. That don't go, that don't get fixed. Um, just generally, support will be bad for it if there are any bugs that um, that cause problems in the future. So a lot of people that are that have used Angular JS for their websites in the past are going to be moving over to another framework. Um, so at my company, we chose to use Vue, and really this is just because we thought we found Vue to be a really lightweight, really easy to use front end framework. Um, but honestly, something else like Angular, Angular or React could have been just fine. Um, basically though, so Vue works using nested components. It's very similar to React in that way, um, but each component is really compartmentalized. So you have your style, your JavaScript, and your templates um, all together built into one file. So that makes it really easy to store state and do all the processing that you need. Um, really close to the actual HTML. Um, Vue also has a really nice feature or a really nice library that can be used with it called Vuex. So Vuex is a state management library that if there is any state that the whole application needs or like multiple different components in different places will need, you can hoist them up to Vuex and Vuex will manage them and you can pass those down to, um, to any component that needs them. And so that makes it really easy. So in order to migrate an Angular JS application over to Vue, um, basically there, there are just a few steps that need to be taken. Um, every single Angular component needs to be moved over to a Vue component, which that in itself is a pretty big job. Um, and then the Angular factories, which is where a lot of the processing and logic happens, it's basically the controller level, needs to be moved over to the Vuex store. Um, or if it's only going to be used in a few different components, it could be just moved, that logic can be moved directly into the component. Um, and then finally, the Angular router needs to be converted to a view router, which we won't get into because basically at that point, you're, you're ripping out all of the Angular that's left and only um, inserting view. So really quickly, what we'll see in this video is the webpack.config.js folder which is where the bundling happens. Basically, this will allow the Vue components to be bundled up within the Angular app um, and then be sent off to the web browser to be rendered. Um, we'll also look at how to mount an Angular instance, um, how, to, how to add that Vue instance to the controller, to pass props to the Vue instance, and then emit actions back out to the parent Angular um, controller, and then how to access Vuex stores both from within the Vue component and within the Angular controller. All right, so this is the website that we're gonna be rebuilding right now. Um, it's the Lingotech Marketplace. So Lingotech is a translation management company. Um, their products include CMSs that they have the ability to translate the content within. Um, so it's pretty cool. So if you go down and look at each of these menus, it becomes a drop down. So we're going to try to replace this transfiguration, translation configurations um, with our own view component when we click this. OK, first things first, before we can add view components to our Angular app, we need to add view and a view loader to this application. Um, so to, to install the view loader, we'll run this command this npm install dash d view loader and view template compiler. Um, so because I already have it um, loaded up and I've already installed this, I'm not going to run it again. Um, in addition to that, we'll need to install run npm install view and npm install vuex. 
Um, basically, those will just give us all the tools that we need to add these view modules to our application. So in addition to that, we'll have to go to the configuration of Webpack and add a few things. This view loader plugin will just help us to load the view up. Um, we'll also have to tell it how to handle uh, files with the extension .view, and we'll have to tell it to use the view loader. And then we'll just add plugins to um, the plugins object. This basically just tells the whole application how to bundle it up and deliver it to um, as a as a bundled JavaScript, CSS, and HTML file. All right, so now we're getting into the meat of the project. What we're going to do here is we're going to go find the place in the HTML where the Angular mounts its component onto um, our page. We're going to remove that one and, in, and create another div where the view component can mount its component um, into our page. So here's the place in our products.html because we're in the products page. Um, so if we look here, it's UI view, content, style, padding left, 10 pixels. So these are all the things that the Angular component needs, and um, it only shows up if the content type is, is visible. So that's why when we click the little triangle dropdown, and then, then that's when it showed up. Um, so what we're going to do is delete this div and insert another nested div. So we're going to say on ng init, which is basically when the Angular comes and loads this, it's going to call this function mount view component that we're going to define here in our products controller. Um, we're also going to add this non -bind, ng non bindable attribute to our application um, div. And basically what that's going to do is tell Angular not to touch it. So just treat it like a regular div and not do any processing on that, um, which is what it would have done otherwise. So because we removed that div from the HTML, you can see that as you click on this dropdown with the translation configurations, nothing shows up. It's because we haven't created a view component to go there yet. And so let's do that. OK, so now we're going to create a view component to eject into the HTML in the div that we created for it. So this is a, just a standard boiler, boilerplate view component. You have a template section, a script section, and a style section. So basically every view component has its HTML, JavaScript, and CSS all kind of packaged together. Um, so what we're going to do first is just add a quick div to our template. It's with an ID of app, which is the same ID that we put here. Um, and it just says, hello world, a quick little thing. So now we're going to need to mount that. So if we look at our HTML, um, we said on, on initialize, it's going to call the function mount view component, right? So now here in our products controller, we're going to need to define that, which I'll do right now. Okay, so now our mount view component function is present. Um, now what we need to do is pull in view, the view library and our view component, right? So we'll do that at the top. We'll go import view from view because it's already been installed. We're also going to say import view component from and then point to this um, to this directory and then it'll be called component dot view. Now um, we'll have access to the view library and the component now. So what we're going to do is extend this view component because we can't call it um, just by itself. We'll need to extend it since it's not actually within a view project right now, it's within an Angular project. So what we do is const extended component equals view.extend view component. Right, so this extended component will be the one that we can actually work with rather than the original. So we'll say const new section equals new extended component put that in parentheses and it'll be an object All right so now we'll be able to pass in any props that we need but because it's just an extended component and not a component itself it'll have to be props data so we'll give it some data and it'll be a string it says irs rocks um, so this is great to create this component within this environment however we still need to mount it Right, and we'll use that, and we'll do that using the Angular mount method. So that's just dollar sign mount, and then we'll give it the um, HTML 
selector that or that points to the div where we need to map it. So in that case, it's pound app, and we'll call it good there, and we'll see if it works. Okay, so now that we look at the website, we're on our products page. Um, when we go to the trans translation configurations dropdown, it now shows hello world, which is what we put in our div. So that's working exactly how we wanted it to. Okay, so now let's look at our view component. Um, it's mounted and working on the products page, but all we have is a static hello world. So let's see if we can get our IS rocks that we pass in as props data to display. So within the view component, we're going to accept that as props. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to create an object called some data, which has to be the same name that gets passed in over here. So some data needs to match some data. Um, and we'll create it as an object. We'll give it a type of string with an uppercase S and a default value of the empty string. Um, so now we will save that. Oh, okay. So we'll save that and then we'll add it up here uh, to our hello world. So we'll do a double bracket and just add some data. Right. So now as we save and rebuild that, we should be able to go and view that now um, in our products page. Okay, let's see, we're on our products page. We'll go into the translation configurations and we see hello world and IS rocks. So this just shows how you can pass data from the parent Angular component down into the view child component. Um, and it also will work the other way. We'll be able to emit actions back up um, to the Angular component. And that uh, that's a little bit more complicated and it's a little bit less intuitive. Um, but here, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to log to the console every time this component is clicked. So in Angular, you can do a nice little shortcut for an onclick. You go at click equals, and then you give it the name of a function. We're going to call it handle click. Um, and you don't include the parentheses at the end. That's just a weird view syntax. So now here in our methods, um, methods object, we're going to create a handle click method. Um, and when that's clicked, we'll just console.log clicked just so that we know that that works. And we're also going to emit this in action out to the controller. So the way that we do this is we go this dot dollar sign emit, and then we can call it whatever we want. We'll say um, component clicked in camel case here. So this will throw this up to the products controller. So what we need to do here at this point is catch it. So the way that we do that is we call this um, new section dot dollar sign on and then we give it what we called it here which is component clicked so on component clicked and then the next parameter is what we're going to do so we'll call this function um, and we'll just log to the console dot again so we'll do console dot log clicked from products controller and let's see what that does. Okay, so here we are at the products page again. Um, we're in trans translation configuration section. We've got our view component right here. And just to see um, that this, this spot only is our view component, we can open up the view console and it'll highlight that spot. And it's called component, so that's nice. Um, we'll look at the console and then now when we click it, it's clicked, which is what we um, what we logged from within the view component, and then clicked from products control, which was the result of us emitting that event up to the products controller. Um, and so this is just an example of passing events from the view component to the products controller. And so th this is a way that we can do some of that inverse communication. And that's all we're going to do today. Um, sorry this went a little bit long. If you have any questions, especially about Vuex stores, please feel free to comment here or contact me directly. Um, thanks for watching.